All right, hi everybody. I'm John McLaughlin with the Iowa Firearms Coalition, your incoming chairman as we head into the uh, last part of 2021 and into 2022. And through these videos, I'm going to be introducing some of the key folks in my life in the firearms world and uh, hopefully bring you some interviews that'll be of value to you and not just gun stuff, but more about relationships and people and kind of uh, the big tent that the Second Amendment has become. So. On the screen with me now is a gentleman I met at a uh, active self-protection course I was helping teach uh, last spring in Ohio. Ahmed, and pr pronounce your last name, Syed or? Syed, yep, that, that's pretty spot on. <laughs> so you're like one of the coolest guys I've met in this class. Oh, thank you very much. You were just like, totally willing to take instruction. You were overcoming maybe some personal, physical things, uh, battled all day with uh, cold weather, your hands getting cut on your gun. Uh, you just yeah. like exemplified a lot of uh, that, that warrior mindset that we want people to have out there, kind of persevering through you know, all kinds of struggles. So before we even get into that, just tell me a little bit about yourself and then we'll kind of back into the person that we trained with several months ago to the person that we see yeah. today. Absolutely. Uh, so I was born in Pakistan. Uh, I have um, a pretty normal family upbringing life. And with, you know, South Asian families, how you know, it's either could be a doctor, be an engineer, or you're nothing to us. So kind of went through that mindset, come from a family that had all healthcare uh, kind of side of drive of things. And that's why I ended up, you know, being in the pharmacy part of the things. And, I'm, you know, I'm a graduate pharmacist, as I said, right now. Nothing that's strung in with firearms or defensive life as, you know, as we, uh, a lot of people say we grew up with guns. It was none, none like that. So I got into firearms and, you know, the defensive training mindset pretty late. I always was into, you know, I was into boxing first then powerlifting and stuff like that, but never really thought about self-defense and had that, you know, idea of, oh, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to hold my own if something comes down because I lift so much weight or whatnot, however you want to put it. And it got to a point when, you know, I came over to the U.S. and I immigrated and all that, uh, that I started realizing and started, I, I needed a new direction. And this is how my journey started, is I had no idea what jiu-jitsu is. I had no idea what my toy is. Mm -hmm. And... I was powerlifting in Pakistan. And when I came here, I had no direction as to what to pursue now. So I said, let's just go to jiu-jitsu. And I just walked into a gym and I got humbled in first five minutes. And I went in with the idea is I'm, I'm in my peak form of powerlifting right now and I'll break people in half. But for five minutes, a guy half my size toyed with me. And I was like, I, I was sold and I was humbled. And from that, the defensive mindset started building up. It's like, this stuff needs training and not just one or two seminars. This is an ongoing learning experience that you need to keep getting better and better, better. Mm -hmm. And then it just, you know, shot off from there to it. This is just one side of the picture, hands on, you know, knowing how to fight with your hands or on the ground. Then it started swinging into, all right, we need to, because when we were talking self-defense, we're not just, you know, our defensive training or being a better person yourself at being defending yourself. It is the physical fight, it's the medical fight, it is the financial fight, it is the legal fight, and it is the moral fight of things. And it started butting off, okay, I need to train with in trauma aid, I need to train in firearms. And then it took off from there in all so many different directions. And just being trying to stay at it, trying to get better at, at you know, every day. So it's ended up training a lot with people that know, uh, you know, and everyone goes through this curve of growing slowly. If you go get your CCW certification, and you start looking around. I was just blessed uh, by finding people that knew uh, how, the right way and kind of put me on the right track out from the get-go. But the summary of it is I sl started slow, started pretty late in life, but I was just blessed to find people that guided me well to put me on the right track. So how did, you end, up in, how did you end up in class with us in Ohio last spring? So... Uh, I've been following active self-protection for a very long time, from the very early days. Uh, we are friends on Facebook, and I'm sure you have noticed that I don't put any of my gun stuff or any of my training stuff on my personal profile, like none of it. Right. And that's just, like, it's no one's, 
there is no reason for me to project that because I'm not, you know, I'm just an average guy. I don't see the need to tell people that I've trained. I, I mean, I'm going to go share my thoughts on subjects that need my thoughts on. So it kind of stayed like that. I was following the forum, but I wasn't actively commenting on it or, you know, I was just watching, learning, watching, learning. And you, you guys, uh, you, uh, John Korea, Neil, all those guys are, there's, there's something about you guys that is so welcoming and so warm, you know, uh, it's like the vibe of it is like, this guy genuinely wants to get you better. And what he's saying makes sense. So mm -hmm. from day one, it clicked. And th this was right around the time I was trying to get into the defensive training and whatnot. So was following it for a long time, but, and I was trying to get some training in with John. It's just that with a family life, with kids, it's hard for me to travel out. And then I saw he's coming to Ohio in Cleveland. And I was like, there's no way I'm missing that. And I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm going. And yeah, I'm just glad and blessed that I get to meet you uh, there as well. And, you know, I always say, and I keep telling this way, I'm not just saying it to your face, that you are one of the kindest and the most humble guys that I've come around in this industry. And I'm very thankful to have met you. you know, that's why I ended up over there. But I've been following him for a long time. It goes both ways. It just, uh, you know, there's always one guy in class that that's pretty memorable, and sometimes it's not for the best reasons. No. But uh, <laughs> yeah. you, you were for good reasons. So coming from oh, Pakistan and now in the U.S., uh, from 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 basically no guns to now guns are available. What are your thoughts on like the whole Second Amendment situation that we have here, and some of the I don't know, just watching what's going on in the media, the, the attacks on some of these liberties you can now enjoy. So uh, from Pakistan, Pakistan is a very pro-gun country. Okay. Uh, so pro-gun that we don't have an anti-gun problem there. We have a pro-gun problem in a sense that, and I don't want it to come across strong, a pro-gun in a sense that everyone thinks he's an expert when there is no expert. So it's a different kind of a problem. Like we have a lot of guns, but we don't have a lot of trained, well-sorted gun people. Uh, so we had firearms. Uh, I had firearms in house growing up. Uh, we just never trained with them. And my father never, you know, we never even talked about firearm safety rules to begin with, even though we had firearms in house and kids in the house. We were not allowed to touch it. They were not in excess and all that. But there was no training, no education, no understanding that we have a gun and what, why do we have the rights of the thing? Like firearm ownership is not a right over there. It's more of a, a privilege over there. You know? if that makes any sense. Yeah. But when I came over here and, you know, I don't think people realize how big of a blessing it is to have Second Amendment and have this as a right that cannot be infringed upon the way it's worded, unless you go and see where it's not a right and see how lives are affected by that over there. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like I'm blessed to be in a country uh, to be a citizen of a country where this is a, this is actually understood as a right, which rightly so is a right, uh, and I would I would not want to lose any even an inch of that right ever. Uh, when people attack, and it, I don't know how you can't see through how childish, baseless, and you know. The, the comments, the arguments made against it are, I in any other field in life, people that are not experts in a field, their opinions are not given. There is a, there is a thing called opinions and there is a thing called informed opinion. If you're not an expert, if you haven't trained, you don't understand. You're not a subject matter expert to have any kind of informed opinion that holds any value on the topic. And the people that are commenting on whether or not guns should be a right. And, you know, there's, they come from all different sides and all different angles. But to have any kind of informed opinion on any of that, you need to first, if you show me that I've trained for the last 20 years with people that know what's up and now I have this opinion against guns, all right, we can have, we can sit down and have a discussion about it. But if you don't even know the basic trigger discipline and you're sitting there trying to teach me on why guns are bad, your opinion doesn't have any weight and honestly doesn't have any value. Yeah, the, the, the internet and social media has <laughs> definitely changed that. Uh, Absolutely. I, I worked in television for 30 years as a meteorologist. And, you know, in the early days, people had to write you and tell you how horrible you were. Now they can just get online <laughs> and instantly everybody knows about it. 
And that just puts more responsibility on your shoulders. When you have an access like that, where someone like me who has no training in, you know, how to be, be on television and no understanding of what kind of, you know, the responsibility that brings on your shoulder, but I can reach millions. That's the recipe for disaster if a wrong person gets that kind of reach. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. So you, you brought up some good points about training. You know, even here in the U.S., we have, you know, the majority of people that have firearms and maybe they have zero training. Maybe they took one class. So the mindset here in the Midwest is, well, I grew up hunting, deer hunting, pheasant hunting, so I know about firearms. And then you actually get them into a class and kind of expose what they don't know. Um, yep. And you brought up some other good thing. It's not just firearms. Uh, it's the medical. It's everything that goes with it. So what would your Absolutely. encouragement be to folks that uh, may have a nine millimeter Glock that they're carrying around every day, but have never done the kind of training we did in Ohio or anything yep. even uh, close to that? So uh, nowadays, I'm trying to, uh, we're trying to set up and polish and, uh, you know, just come up with a circle for a competitive program. Uh, that I've been working on for a few months and, uh, you know, we're, it's going to take a few months before it gets polished and goes through all the steps. But a lot of people that I've put through those are well-trained jiu-jitsu guys that for some reason and well-trained wrestling wrestlers and strikers from my thought mm -hmm. that before we put them through any kind of learning and we break it down and we're poly I'm bringing them in and these are black belts, purple belts, you know, uh, coming in. And they have this idea in their head that they got this. And I get them, you're comfortable on the ground. Like you're a wrestler, right? We'll stand up and start. You're a jiu-jitsu guy. Let's give you top mount. Come up. Right. I'll give you a dominant position on the ground. And now take my gun away from me and defend yourself. Mm -hmm. Just to give them an idea. And this is just a very specific example that I'm giving. But just to make a point. is like get people, they have never strung that skill with firearms. But they have this idea in their head that they're going to do fine. Unless you have actually trained and tried it, you are not. You're not going to rise to the kitchen and become a hero like it, uh, like Tom Cruise in a movie. You're going right. to fall back to what you've trained or you're most proficient at. So I think it comes down to trying. Anything you think you can do, just go ahead and try it with someone who can safely and competently put you through. It. I mean, don't just go start shooting on your farm and with no safe backstop. Right. But unless you, unless you get to try it, don't believe that you actually can. And once people start, uh, go out there and start trying, they see that no, they're not actually. And this is generally the theme of whatever kind of training you put, that no, where you think you are, you're actually not there 100% of the time. Uh, and it really comes down to, uh, and I understand this sounds like a lot when we say you have to train this, 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 this. It doesn't matter what the final, you know, uh, your, what's, what your final goal is. What matters is taking that first step. So start slow, take one step. Go seek training with a competent trainer. There are many trainers out there and not all are good, but there are some very mainstream trainer, uh, trainers that travel around. And a good place to start would be uh, for a newbie would be to, let's just go to like a active self-protection summit. There can be such a mix of good trainer. Just go to uh, primary and secondary, something like that. You know, mm -hmm. go to a training summit. We can have a good mix of people that you're going to know uh, they're going to help you. They're, they're going to be warm and welcoming. And that would be a good place to start. But unless you have never trained and taken that first step, you're not as good as you think you are defending yourself. Yeah. And uh, I, I teach flying. I don't know how much I've told you about, but uh, I teach helicopters and airplanes. And part of that is testing people so I can actually give them a I license. I follow that. Right. And uh, it, it's the exact same thing as the firearms rule. I call it the 50% rule. Like you said, nobody rises to up here when you pull the engine back to idle and say, okay, you know, power failure. Uh, they, they sink to about 50% of their capability, you know, and if you're highly trained, practice all the time, 50% will win the day. But if you're like a 60% guy that think you're 100 and now you're down at 30, you're probably going to get the <laughs> your lights pounded out. So, uh, you know, that stress inoculation, constantly training under stress That's and that... You know, and, and no situation is going to replicate, you know, either in ground fighting and firearms or aviation, what you're going to face for real. But having already trained under stress, under stress, under stress, now it's like, absolutely. Okay, I just handled the problem. Just like Chuck uh, Pressburg's no fail pistol. Right, right. As soon as he says, 
take your time, do whatever you want. You got 10 minutes for 10 rounds, but make sure none of that miss that B8 circle at 25 yards, right. just that one stress. And then the group starts opening up and you're going to have one flyer in there or something. So it, it unless you have the whole, it comes just down to, if you think that you're capable of something and you've actually never trained and tried it to prove it to yourself consistently, it's not about you going out there one evening and doing it and they're like, I got it. You have, if you're not consistently good at it, you have not proven it to yourself that I'm consistently good at it. Don't believe that you, you're going to have that ability on demand. And that's that's just the truth of it. Yeah, absolutely. But let's talk about inclusion a little bit. That's one thing I enjoyed about the class we were together. We had, you know, basically every walk of life in there and with no preconceived notions about people. And that's really what I'm striving for uh, here with our uh, local group in Iowa called the Iowa Firearms Coalition. Is it, We don't care about your race, religion, uh, female, <laughs> any of that stuff. We yeah. want everybody. Uh, Second Amendment applies to all. Let's get everybody. Absolutely. Uh, trained up to a, a very competent level. So tell me a little bit about your experience in that area. So uh, glad that you bring it up. Uh, first thing is this thing goes both ways, right? Uh, as soon as my family, my friends, they find out they're like, hey, you're into firearms, that they have this stigma. If they, if they know that you're into firearms and you're training and then you're from Pakistan and you look Middle Eastern, you know, the truth of it, and this is what I tell everyone, never in my life since I've been here, I have ever, and this may be just an Ohio thing or a small city that I'm in thing, I don't know what it is, but my personal experience has been not just firearms, out of it, you treat people, with, generally people are good, they, they want to be good, they are good, you treat them with respect, they treat you with respect. I've never felt any different treatment from what I would expect, and the only time I've been treated differently it's been that they're trying to take care of me more than they would of a different. Mm -hmm. So it's been on the good side. When it comes to Second Amendment, I have like the class that we were in together. When I um, uh, when I started getting cold and I started shivering, uh, I got a group hug, <laughs> right? And it just blew me away. It's like so, one of the most humble people, one of the most kindest people, people that give respect, is the Second Amendment community that I've come across with. I, I don't know if I'm lucky. I've been with people that, you know, have been good trainers, good instructors, good mentors, and people that I look up to, you being one of them. I Like I've said this on Facebook before when we were even conversed. It's like, well, you're one of the people I look up to. Uh, they're one of the best people that I know. And I, I don't care where, what backgrounds they're coming from, what states they're coming in from, what mm -hmm. none of that matters. Um, I feel like Second Amendment, as far as my experience, exposure has been to this uh, Second Amendment group of folks that believe in that training, that try to get better at it and try to protect it. It's like those are one of the most sought, well sorted, and you know, just great people in the general. I've never felt not included in any of the classes, no matter what course I go to. So for this year, uh, let's say I've trained with. Uh, Forge Tactical trained with Centrifuge for their VCQB, Chuck Pressburg, Riley. Riley's an awesome guy. Uh, uh, crazy with, <laughs> he's crazy. He's insane. I love this guy. Uh, I've trained with uh, Scott Jedlinski, trained with uh, you, trained with Neil and uh, John uh, with you. Uh, I've trained with um, Varg Freeborn, trained with uh, Chris Seislove of Blue Alpha Gear. So, all the, so I've trained with so many different people mm -hmm. with so Every class has like at least five, 10, 12 guys. Every single one of them, like I can't even point out like, that there was something off about this guy or I didn't feel like I was respected or feel like I was about great conversations, smiles, talking to each other, giving each other, uh, you know, pointers, hey, trying to help each other get better. It's just, I love, I love it. Like every time I'm around, th th this is, these are my group of, my tribe, right? My kind of people I want to be around. Just, yeah. So that's how I feel about it. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to try to pull up a picture on the screen. I, this is like I'm, yeah. I'm a Zoom neophyte, but let's talk about where you were to where you are. And it's, uh, let's see if I can do this here. It's one of the most sure. incredible oh. trans transformations that I've seen. So let's see. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you're able to see that on your end or not. So. I, I do. Gonna... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. All right. So it's like. <laughs> Where's my buddy at? He's not the same person. <laughs> no, he's not. So what happened was um, 
pretty much I got lazy. Uh, I was into, like I said, I was into powerlifting and all that. I was into jiu-jitsu, Muay Thai before I got married. Mm -hmm. And when I got married, uh, I was like, I got the girl. What's the reason to be, look better anymore? You know what I mean? Uh, and it just like life and breaks and all that gets with you. Like I kept with the firearms training and all that, but you know, life gets you. And I just got lazy. Uh, the biggest thing that I, like this was seven months. So this transformation took me exactly seven months. These two pictures were seven months apart. And I, the biggest thing that got me was in my head, I still don't feel any different. Like I have to look at that picture to see, oh boy. Mm -hmm. And I keep those pictures and I have th that exact cargo pants, that exact t-shirt hanging in my basement. I have to put it on, feel it, to tell myself I'm never going back. Um, but in my head, when I'm not looking at it and I'm not looking at these pictures, at the resting normal, I feel like I, I'm capable of doing the exact same things mm -hmm. that I was back then, when in reality I'm not. Like I have to, when I run a mile or run three miles on a treadmill, now I'm like, wow, I'm surprising myself. Okay, I can right. do that now, and which I couldn't. Right. So I was just comfortable and I didn't see the need to, you know, get better. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, well, if I have to come set, set, up, set up and fight someone for my life right now, I should be able to, but right. I couldn't. And, but the reality, so I think that is where the first realization started is like, like, what kind of point it is i always knew this and i wanted, wanted to get back at this and i helped my friends get better with it but i never made that change for myself um, in the last five years where i let myself go but i like if you're a great self-defender and you train so much right you train you invest so much in training and all that but then you die of a heart attack mm -hmm. at age 35 are you a good self-defender right like is the point of winning a gunfighter is the point of surviving and being better right and that always was there. And I was teaching other people. And then I looked at myself, I was like, why, why the, can't I lead with example? It's just like the same exact thing, an instructor preaching a standard, mm -hmm. but not demonstrating that, right? And then just one day, I just woke up and I'm like, all right, we start today. And it's the same exact thing. I don't have to go 100 on day one. I'll start with fixing one meal. Like from tomorrow, I don't care what happens for the rest of the day. The breakfast is going to be the proper balanced portion diet. I'm going to, I don't care if I go walk hundred yards, but for those hundred yards, I'm going to be in that groove where I'm making that hundred yards count. And it just started like that and just took off. And I'm, I'm glad where I am. Yeah, it's fantastic. And I really wanted to share that story because so many people Thank have you. battled different things over the last 18 months in this country. Uh, you know, between it's, COVID it's, yeah. and not being able to get the gyms and gyms being closed and the masks and just everything. A lot of people, including myself, have let themselves go a little bit. And, <laughs> and you are just like, you know, let's get people back into gear, get back into shape because, you know, Absolutely. we don't get a pick the day that we end up on our back having to fight somebody off of us, right? 100%. 100%. And it's, it's just the idea, uh, like, don't be overwhelmed with it. Don't look at my journey and it's not over yet it's just step one i'm i'm, I'm keep going I'm, I'm getting better uh but it's don't don't get overwhelmed with it just understand that i was where i was look at where i was and understand how intimidating it would have been for me to think right. so my goals kept changing my first goal was just lose 60 pounds like right now where i sit i've lost 148 pounds wow. lost 14 inches of waist and I went from a size 3XL t-shirt to a medium that I'm wearing right now, and it's still loose. Like, I can pull it off. Right. So, and it, that sounds intimidating, but what you have to realize is in my head back in April when I started, I just took one baby step. And it's all about baby steps. So you, you're just competing with yourself. And even if you can, like, when we're, I'm lifting, standing in front of the mirror in the gym, all I'm fighting is me doing the same exercise last week. I just want to lift one more pound from what I lifted last week. So as long as you're making that one tiny bit progress, or even if you're plateauing, you're staying right there, you're not going backwards, you're making progress. Just keep at it. Don't get overwhelmed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic advice. You're an inspiration to me. Like I said, it's a, oh. you're one of the memorable guys. Uh, Thank you very much. We, we loved having you in class. I just love uh, watching you and your it. family and going out and seeing pictures of what you're doing. And I just admire you as a family man and as a self -defender. Thank you so much. And, as an encouragement to everybody else. I, I appreciate you joining, sharing a little bit of your story. And I hope through others watching this that uh, they're gonna get encouraged. You're gonna start getting training and most of all, take care of them themselves so that you can be there Absolutely. for your family for, for many years to come.
No, thank you so much for having me. I I really appreciate you, you know, reaching out and asking me to do this. And, you know, like I said, I look back up to you and you have no idea how much, like flying was one of my passions. You fly. <laughs> You're one of the most humble and kindest people. And I don't, I keep saying this, but that, because that's true. Like I, I don't, I can't think of any other person that I've found. Uh, so I kind of look, I want to be like you. Uh, when I want to inspire people around me like you do. So okay. thank you so much. Like, I if appreciate you decide it to get an airplane or helicopter, you know who to call. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to take baby steps. I'm going to stop okay. with the motorcycle. All right. Very good. Take care, my friend. We'll talk soon. Thank you. All take right. care. Thank you so much, John. Have a good day. Bye.